very peculiar, peculiar trendsetter that right now they are in talks. And all of this could have been avoided had Tony Khan decided not to fire CM Punk and taken the side of a mid jobber <clears throat> uh, in Jack Perry. But I digress on that trendsetter. How surprising. I mean, I am totally surprised here that this has even gotten to this point where Warner Brothers Discovery now could be a viable option. And if you, whoever you hear right now, it could be the option as we head into the next few months. Are you surprised that it's gotten this far and that Warner Brothers could be closing in, closing in on WWE? I can't say I've been surprised. You know why? Because nothing surprises me now in the world of business, as we've both seen from examples in wrestling to other forms of business. It doesn't surprise me if something has gained as much momentum as you had mentioned before, starting off the show, that WWE is on this huge roller coaster right now where it's it's up and down in terms of excitement for a fan. But from business-wise, business is doing great right now in terms of the type of momentum they have gained, and they're still garnering that same momentum leading into – clearly WrestleMania because we're in the midst of WrestleMania season and AW is now, it feels like at least from, you know, just trying to be objective here is doing the opposite. What surprised me when you told me about this is like, when you said to me, I wasn't that, I was like, okay. But then in terms of kind of correlating the fact that because when CM Punk signed and we saw, and you showed me the projections of the shows in the past couple of weeks with broken down in segments and, and basically CM Punk segment being the highest one out there and, could the two be linked? Possibly two, but listen, man, at the end of the day, anything makes sense. Granted, yes, they're connected with AEW right now, but as we know, whether it be Fox or USA or when WWE is on Spike TV or Paramount, whatever makes business sense and garners the most money because when they made the shift over to Fox, it kind of didn't make sense, but when you saw the amount of money that was going in on that deal, you're like, wow, well, of course now, why wouldn't WWE go that route? So, you know, it, it doesn't surprise me one bit. What would be interesting, though, what happens is that, let's say, for example, it goes that route. Now, AEW has to find a new home. And I think, honestly, the way things are going, that would be kind of one final shot in the in the gut for AEW. I mean, granted, they would find another production or another TV network to do it in. But to lose that momentum, if it were, to po if it were possible, which I think it, it, it seriously is, what a blow for AEW if that occurred. But also, what a great... Um, great uh, launching point in terms of wow just continuing that momentum for wwe and what a great statement that would make for them hey listen i mean just the very fact that this is even going on right now surprised a lot of people because whoever you listen to whether it's the aw supporters or whether it's people that are in the business and they're saying that warner brothers had a really good relationship with aw and tony khan and that they were talking and everything was progressing and that they had bought more time. They actually made a show collision for CM Punk because obviously they couldn't get along with the elite CM Punk, and they basically wanted him very badly. And listen, he's been the highest commodity the AEW have, has ever signed so far, and he's still leading merch getter for that company. So when they make a show for you, they're kind of not going to be happy when you get rid of that guy. And my first reaction was like, listen, even before when CM Punk had signed and everything was in the honeymoon stages, everything revolved around Punk and what he was going to do outside of the company. You heard Warner Brothers say they wanted to put him in movies. They wanted to do all these other things. It was the outside projects that they wanted CM Punk for. Not only was he going to be the face of AEW, he was also going to be the face outside. CM Punk draws. And as much as maybe I don't want to admit it, or maybe as I can be in denial, he obviously does because the numbers don't lie, right? It's evident right there in the ratings jump when he's there, when he's on screen, people want to see him. He is a lightning rod. They want to say, they want to see what he says next. So for AEW to even be in this spot, trendsetter, is just to me shows you that right now they're going through. A, a lack of leadership, and B, just our, everything right now, which turned to gold, every signing that Tony Khan would bring out would be amazing, and they would have uh, some kind of direction. Now they don't have direction. Now it seems like, okay, it kind of seems like a WCW thing. They would sign somebody, you know, it'd be hunky-dory for a few months, and then, again, what do you do? What do you do with guys like Amiro who 
looks so directionless right now. What do you do with guys that have come in like Aleister Black, Malachi Black? He's stuck in the trios match, hasn't had a singles matchup in what seems like forever. Andrade, who is maybe possibly on his way out back to WWE, you don't know, but his contract is, is expiring soon. It seems like right now there is a lack of leadership. And where are the EVPs to be found? They're on hiatus. They're, you know, focusing on their heel turn as they come back. They've given up being the elite. Uh, Kenny Omega, again, is going through a booking phase where I don't understand why he is not being put in a uh, better situation. The man is the cleaner. The man is the best bout machine. And he's stuck in a tag team. Uh, with Chris Jericho kind of looks like it's forced. They don't seem comfortable together. There's so much right now with AEW, the negativity, the lack of crowds like we talked about uh, last week. And it's led to this. It's led to now there being a kind of uh, the honeymoon phase or that lovey-dovey feeling between Warner Brothers Discovery and Tony Khan and AEW. Instead of it being a love and a friendship, it seems like this is just business, right? Wouldn't you say so? Well, yeah, kind of like I said, it's, it's business. It really is. If you are signing a contract for work for a network and they're expecting a certain number, right? And I'm not going to pretend like I'm Eric Bischoff and I know what I'm talking about in terms of ratings and numbers, right? But I just from layman's terms, if you sign a contract for a certain amount of numbers that you plan on doing for viewership to validate the amount of money you're getting paid to be put on that time slot or being being promoted on that show and helping build that channel network streaming platform whatever and you're not living up to that and then you're hearing an offer or negotiations for another promotion that's the same kind of thing but doing higher and doing more and has more of a broader audience which is what you want what are you going to do you could say it's lack of leadership too i would also use the word for aw in terms of it seems like there's a lack of direction too you, you mentioned a few names there where you know there are hires and when you heard about it you're like oh wow this individual is all elite this person's all elite, so cool. And then, unfortunately, which seems to be now the pattern that's going on with all the wrestling right now. And again, this isn't us bashing; it's just being obvious and being, you know, stating facts. It just doesn't really seem it has been pretty successful because of those people you mentioned. And all of a sudden, like, where are they now? They're kind of off TV, and then they'll show up three or four months later. Looks like they're gaining momentum, and then it's kind of start and stop. Really, what's happening? So, it's uh, it's frustrating, definitely. So. There you go. There you have it. And now the fact that the guy that you fired in CM Punk, listen, I'm not sure. This is this is companies, right? This is billions of dollars, millions of dollars is going to be transferred over. I'm not sure that one guy could have this huge pull like CM Punk. Like, for example, them saying that CM Punk kind of brought WB back to WWE and opened the door for the talks. Maybe, but I don't think CM Punk was like, listen, uh, guys, you know, talk to, you know, I have, you know, their personal number and maybe give it over to Triple H or Nick Khan or somebody in the in the group of TKO, right? But I do think that the name is somebody that Warner Brothers had their eye on from the start. This is the guy that's like, wait a minute, now he's over here and now he's playing these ratings because, again, look at the numbers, right? And they're looking at it and like, whoa, wait a minute. Like, this is what we always thought. And now he's on this place, which is a, a, a company which is basically like, like the Yankees, right? When yeah. you companies these are like the new york yankees established company and we have sam punk over here triple h the, he i can tell you right now i don't think he likes sam punk but he is not going to not do business he is a smart guy man and he knows that this would have put them over the top raw was not going to get 400 million dollars they weren't they were going to get maybe 200 million 250 and 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 talks were stalling and there really was no direction no legit you know, number one contender, maybe FX maybe was in the mix at that point, but they weren't going to get $400 million. Now with a guy like CM Punk, are you going to get to $400 million? Maybe not, but you're going to get closer to your target that you wanted to. And it was just a phenomenal decision by Triple H to put any animosity aside. And now it's like a love fest. Like, Transitor, it is so weird to see the, the I guess the honeymoon stage, right? You you wonder how long it's going to last. But right now, our, like, it's crazy to see CM Punk happy i gotta like i'm like is this is this part of a, uh, um, a plan is it part of uh you know is it part of like uh, an angle he just looks so happy there it looks like man he really is happy to be home but 
a guy like CM Punk, you can't underestimate how important he was. Now, is he the deciding factor when we turn around? If that's a deciding factor, that's shame. That's really a shame on on Tony Khan. No, it, it definitely is. And like I said, this is a direct result of what we're seeing now, where this is was once a possibility went away, and now it's a possibility again. Just shows you, man. Business oversees anything personal. All right. So with that in with that now, do you think that AEW and Tony Khan are going to regret firing CM Punk? Do you think that it could have been handled differently? I'll tell you how I feel. I've put it on. I've put it on social media that I think that the moment that this whole situation happened, seeing the Jack Perry uh, blasting CM Punk on a pay-per-view having that happen having the personal stuff creep onto the pay-per-view and kind of maybe go into business for yourself to me that was a fireball offense and with everything that happened to brawl out you had to make an example now cm punk in the wrong did he touch tony khan I, I, he said he feared for his life right i i don't know what happened there but it should have never have gotten there he should have nipped brawl out in the bud and what happened was they think that the inmates that the inmates run the asylum, and then you have that situation where Jack Perry went into business for himself and basically single handedly could have turned the direction of a company around. You know what I would have done, Transetter? I would have fired him on the spot and made an example, say, Hey, I'm not gonna deal with this garbage anymore. And I would have found a way to keep CM Punk. Because now if it's if it's if the reason that they're off of W of Warner Brothers discovery and they're going to fx or they're going to be moved to discovery in place of wwe that's it man that is the final blow i don't care what happens after that that will always loom on you that will be on your resume that will be etched on your tombstone that that's what you let happen as the owner of that company AEW. you let that happen under your watch or it could have been prevented well i think the, the main point being taken is that it could have been prevented I just feel the lack, again, back to you had mentioned before, a lack of leadership that falls under Tony Khan, whoever he hires to be in charge of handling those types of situations where it should never escalate to that point. Now, there's no question that CM Punk, Phil Brooks is a strong personality. So what happens is you need a guy like Vince McMahon or possibly a Triple H that is willing to take that, withstand that. And again, this I'm not trying to make this an attack on Tony Khan's leadership, but at the same time, you have to be able to manage these these uh, discretions, I guess. These uh, lack of uh, the discretions by by the wrestlers, right? You have to police it better. You have to police it better, and you have to be able to, when you make a decision, say, "All right, this is what's going on." I think when you hear other people talk about Tony Khan, it's always been a positive note. It's always been positive in terms of him being, you know, always willing to listen and and always wanting to have other people's idea, but at the same time, there needs to be a filter system. And as much as Tony Khan is a uh, huge historian, like he loves wrestling and he does understand the history of wrestling, this doesn't necessarily make you the best person of saying, all right, what's a good idea and what's a bad idea. Now, how do you become one of those people? I feel like through practice and through repetition and kind of understanding now what makes a good show or what you feel makes a good show. But at the end of the day, you have to stick with your guns. And, and, and unfortunately, it feels like when CM Punk was part of AEW, he had free range of anything. He could say or do whatever he wanted, and he was never disciplined or never told, listen, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to be you know, professional on this standpoint, or we're not going to talk about this or talk about that or air or dirty laundry. That never seemed to be the case. And kind of what we spoke about last week, too, where now, you know, not to change the subject here, but with Brian Danielson fining people for airing out their discretion. I mean, come on. I mean, what are we doing here? It's it's part of human nature. It's part of the day and age we're in right now. And of course, you can't make everybody happy, but ultimately at the same time that people need to know, working for whatever company, where the line is. Listen, if you have a problem, you come to this person or that person or this group, you don't go out there and air it. And if that message hasn't been stated or it's been stated, then that means individuals are not taking it very seriously. And that's the huge difference right now where like, hey, we're still in the honeymoon phase right now of CM Punk returning. And what's going on in WWE? It couldn't be any better right now, right? So let's see what happens. But ultimately, from the AEW experience to the WWE experience here, it really feels more like WWE is saying, listen, this is what we're doing. We're not venturing from that. And if there's something that changes, then you're done. Plain and simple. It really feels that way, as opposed to AEW where it's not. So I regret it. 
But ultimately, I think what they're going to regret more is that they didn't handle the situation when it first, when these first issues started occurring. That's going to be their biggest regret. Would you have fired Jack Perry? Yeah, on the spot. Would have fired him. Or- you set an example. And not because of Jack Perry. Just, again, it has to stop somewhere. And you have to be willing to, you know, be the one and say, you know what, this is going to hurt me. And whatever the case might be, but the locker room needs to respect me. So that's what should have happened. But again, it should have never gotten to that point. The whole scenario when the first happened with the the the, the scrum in the back to where it led to after um, All In in London and the UK, it's like you can't do that. It, it led to that point now where like you feel you feared for your life, and, and those excuses, although maybe very legitimate in terms of what Tony said, when you're listening from the outside and you're a fan watching stuff on social media, you're just shaking your head like, "Are you serious? You feared for your life?" Should never, and it should never gotten to that point. Shouldn't it shouldn't have, and uh, it's just crazy to see a guy like CM Punk. Remember, this is the WWE now, which basically, if you heard the podcast with Colt Banner, right, uh, failed to mistreat him injury wise, uh, put him out there in dangerous matches while he was hurt, uh, sent, fired him, basically sent the papers on his wedding day, right, his release papers, and no matter all that, think about what happened in AEW that these guys made him even more miserable. Right, even more miserable for him to go back, wanting to go back. Even before that, before he was reinstated, he was looking to come back to WWE, and was able to, I guess, make up with Triple H. And now he's the happy. He's the happiest I've ever seen him. And it's weird, right? Because he's you're so used to like Moody Phil and like Grumpy Phil, and I mean, even the lighting, he looks different. He looks healthier. He looks just. It's crazy what happened there that it could be so, um, just just as bad as what happened in WWE, which is it just nuts to me, man. And now he's in NXT, uh, show, getting appreciation from the stars that want to learn, right? That was a big problem with him. He he really didn't like the fact that these new age of wrestlers didn't want to learn, talk to the older guys, right? So, I mean, it's just crazy, this whole scenario. And it's going to be exciting here to see what happens. At the end of the day, real quick, as we put a ribbon on this part, does Warner Brother? It are, does Warner Brother finally secure Raw? Do you think yes or no? Yeah, I think they do. Yeah, I think so too. And boy, that is going to be whoo, that is going to be some bad press for AEW, man. How do they recover? Where do they go? The pros outweigh the cons here. Where could they go, John Setter? What is next for AEW? Where could their home possibly be? We talked about FX. We talked about maybe Warner Brothers Discovery having both shows and moving AEW to the the discovery side of things, which would be, I mean, that would be a tough pill for Tony Khan to swallow. What is, where do you think they go? What is their next TV home spot? Do you think where they could go? FX? Where could Yeah, it go? We, could, we could throw out networks here of where they possibly go, like said, FX. But right now, let's wait and see what happens here because if, if everything looks in terms of what's going to happen, we'll have plenty of time to discuss what future home AW can go into when this deal does, I feel eventually happen, but right now who knows there, there are viable options out there, but in terms of there's nothing off the top of my head that I think would make a perfect fit. But in, like we said too, if this is going to happen, which I feel it will, it will be a 